My name is Eric Mirko. I am the industry manager for technology at Facebook, and it is a great honor to have the opportunity to share my thoughts on tech for good with you today. But quick anecdote before I start, uh, I first attended the big data conference about six years ago in New York, uh, and there was a Facebook speaker that at the time just wowed me with these consumer and platform insights. Uh, and it really sparked my interest in working for Facebook. And, and about one year later, I ended up taking a job at Facebook. So a huge debt of gratitude to the big data conference organizers, which I will attempt to pay back right now. Um, so today I'm gonna talk to you about using tech for good and how that can power greater representation um, in, in your industries and in the industry and um, in your com companies. At the heart of tech, really, if you think about it, it is to do good. And if you think back for a moment on one of your earliest experiences with technology, and by technology, I mean, you know, the systems and tools that operate and improve our daily lives, connecting and protecting and helping us be more creative and productive. Maybe one of your most memorable technology experiences was when you played your first online role playing game with people around the world, or when you got your first camcorder as a young parent and filmed your kids and their lives and how they are growing up so fast right in front of them, your eyes. Or, or maybe it was buying your first smartphone and realizing that you didn't have to print out MapQuest anymore. I, I might be dating myself, I'm pretty sure I am, but truly one of my favorite introductions to a new piece of technology was the launch of the Palm Pilot. Who remembers that? I, I remember throwing away my file effects at the time and realizing these concepts of portability and mobility were finally pushed into reality. Now these concepts, of course, are at the core of tech innovation and even all these decades later. If we look at my early technology memory and probably many of your own, my guess is that they will all have this one thing in common. They showed how tech makes the impossible possible. How tech makes opportunities that seemed unimaginable become reality. They turn what could be into what is seemingly overnight. These cornerstone values of techs, I'm sorry, of tech create possibility and opening up opportunities are what diversity, equity, and inclusion are all about too. These aren't just some buzzwords that tech has embraced in recent years. These ideas have been core to our industry from the very beginning. But DE&I is just part of technology's mission. It, it goes much further. Technology is ultimately about doing good, making people's lives better, no matter who they are. And if we remain true to tech's roots, including this mission, into everything we do, from ensuring greater representation, driving real societal change, we can create experiences that can meaningfully impact and improve people's lives. We can be true technologists. The world needs tech for good now. 2020 has been a year of reckoning for all of us. It's been a year where many afflictions impacting the world have come to a head. It's a year that has shown critical, global, urgent need for tech for good. While 2020 has been incredibly difficult, it's also shown the progress that humans can make in a short span of time if they are committed to the same goal. Companies swiftly came together to provide support to frontline and essential workers and help small and medium businesses stay afloat. Governments and biotech companies are working together to, to develop COVID-19 vaccines. We're seeing virtual events like this one launched and opened up to more people, fostering connections that we never knew were taking place before. In my career in technology, spanning two decades as an industry manager at Facebook and I've been privileged to witness what tech is capable of when we focus on improving people's lives and changing the status quo. Optimism is the natural attitude of the technologist, and I believe that we can and will transform our world into a better one. Fortunately, more and more leaders across industries are realizing that doing good is also good for business and good for the global economy. By working towards diverse representation as part of product and business strategy, many are seeing how to rebuild and reimagine a better world. Take the gender gap as one example. 
Today, women are earning about a fifth less on average than men globally, according to the World Economic Forum. At the rate that the current gender pay gap is increasing in 2020, it could take 70 years to reach gender parity. By closing the gender gap, we would add $28 trillion to the global economy by 2025. That's a 26% increase. Research has also found that more diverse companies earn more revenue and higher annual stock returns because they are better able to innovate. We are at a point in time when many businesses are re-strategizing to maintain bottom lines amidst all this massive uncertainty and change. But it is clear from these statistics and research that greater representation and equity can power quantifiable business results that not only serve the business, but also serve society at the same time. Therefore, we need to think outside of launch timelines, solution proof points, and competitor data sets, and bake DE&I and social good into strategy from the top down. So Tech for Good is just beginning. It may seem like we're far from an ideal future of equal representation that tech can help bring about, but that future is beginning to unfold around us right now. When Whirlpool's leaders saw that one in five students don't have access to clean clothes, making them more likely to miss school, they created the Care Counts Laundry Program. This program installs washers and dryers in schools with the aim of helping to remove this critical barrier to access. Microsoft Super Bowl spot, I don't know if you caught it, uh, it's called Changing the Game. The ad showed how Microsoft's inclusive design team was able to build a game controller that helped differently abled young gamers participate in games, just like any other kid. And just this past June, GoDaddy ran a powerful spot in honor of pride, encouraging users to hashtag march online to celebrate LGBT, LGBTQ plus and black businesses. One step we're taking at Facebook that I'm particularly proud of is our work around eliminating harmful bias. Our Ads for Equality program is challenging businesses to rethink how they represent people in their ads by providing tools and best practices to generate ads that are more diverse and truly represent all people. Ads for Equality uh, actually looks to help build a more equal world while uh, uh, unlocking business opportunities at the same time. So what does all this take? How, how do you implement all this? So these examples show that change is possible, but you might be wondering, where do I begin? Or what does baking DE and I and social good into everything we do look like in practice? I believe it comes down to five factors. First, make diversity by design like mission critical. We must systematically design diversity into every aspect of our organizations from the teams we hire to the products we create. Diversity should not be an afterthought or an add-on. It must be a condition for success from the start. Increasingly, diversity of all kinds, including cognitive diversity that brings in multiple opinions, professional backgrounds, and ways of thinking, bring about a diversity of perspective. This helps remove blind spots and reveal new opportunities for your products and ideas. Product use cases and accessibility can, can vary by culture and socioeconomic factors. Customers are diverse, and you, so your products and services should be too. Next, offer consistent support and resources to help your people grow. Grow both professionally and personally. Expand your leader's skill sets to, to empower them to build more Inclusive teams where everyone is seen, heard, and valued. Hold your leaders accountable to this. Create these inclusive environments for everyone. Next, normalize the DE&I conversation. There is so much discomfort around you know, speaking to this as an issue, but we have to embrace that discomfort. It's not up to underrepresented people to do the work for us. Everybody needs to be an ally. This normalization process, it, it won't happen overnight. Uh, it takes a shift in habits and thought processes. It requires this ongoing accountability journey, not just one-off training. DE&I should, should be more of an always-on issue, becoming part of everything we touch and do. Further, 
track your progress. We have to, you know, demonstrate there's a, me a measurable impact that can be tracked over time. This is a this is business critical endeavor. So this allows us to, to be effective in how we resource initiatives, identify shortcomings, and lean into the momentum. It is not, it's not about like checking these boxes and you know, finding these deliverables and metrics. It's about setting meaningful goals that have a tangible impact on equity and actually inspire action. And finally, and this is probably the most important factor uh, to DE&I success, start somewhere. Put yourself out there for fear of getting it wrong. You are not alone, but there is something just as bad as getting it wrong, which is not trying at all. We can't let anything hold us back from tackling this challenge. We don't need perfection, we need progress. This attitude of constant iteration and evolution, not stagnation through perfection, is foundational to tech, actually. It's the philosophy that produced many of today's most innovative, successful companies, and it's what will fuel tomorrow's tech leaders. So in closing today, I hope that this talk and others you hear and connect with at this conference leave you feeling inspired and empowered. I hope you feel encouraged to take that first step and reconsider how you can make a difference when it comes to driving equal and diverse representation through technology. Like I said, it isn't about perfection. Striving to be perfect sabotages potential. It's about blending the efficiency of technology with the warmth of human connection to drive genuine, authentic, and positive social impact. After all, technology is not inhumane. There's a reason why some of our favorite memories are tied up with technology. Text is inextricably linked with our humanity. It brings us closer to one another, our world, ourselves. Yes, 2020 is testing us all, but it's also showing us what, humans can, what human beings can make possible. It's, it's showing that we can accomplish every, many things if we collectively commit to doing good. One famous uh, African proverb teaches us, if you, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We can create this future that we all desire, but only if we do it together. Make today your starting point on this exciting journey. Thanks for listening. And I'd love to answer your questions then.